Hi, this is Tom with the community team and today I'm going to give you a quick tour of our day one configuration tool. There are two ways for you to access the tool. Uh, first off, if you haven't registered your device just yet, you can go ahead and access the customer support portal and run the registration as you would normally do. A second way, if you've already registered the device, you can go into the tool section right here and run the day one configuration directly. Both options are also available from the Assets, Devices tabs. Once you've completed your device registration, you will land on this page and you will get the option to run the Day1 configuration tool. This tool is going to help you leverage best practice recommendations, help you onboard faster, reduce, reduce configuration errors and improve security posture, but I'll show you that in a moment. Let's go into the tool. It's pretty easy. The serial number has been preloaded. The device type has been pre-configured as well because we know that this is a firewall. If it were a panorama, this would be showing panorama. The panorama's version you can choose if you're going to be loading an 8.0, 8.1 or 9.0 image. Your host name you can choose. Next up, your management type is the management interface configuration. So if it is a static interface and you know the local network where you're going to be hooking it up to, you can simply put in the IP address you're going to be using for your management interface. If it is going on to a strange network where you don't know which IP range you're going to be used just yet, you can switch this to your DHCP client mode, which is going to fetch an IP address the moment you connect the device to the local subnet. Next up are a couple of logging parameters. So an IP address for an SMTP server, a source and destination email address, and an IP address for remote logging if you have a, a syslog server available, for example. Let's go ahead and generate the configuration file. And we are done. Before moving on, a couple of important things to consider. Make sure that your firewall software version is updated. Your uh, subscription licenses have been activated and you've installed the latest application and threat content packages. Let's go see what this looks like on a firewall. We're going to want to access the device tab, go to setup and then operations. There you can import a named configuration snapshot, go and find the file you just created, import it, and then we're going to load the day one configuration file. And let's take a quick look at what was added with the configuration file. So as we configure to the web interface, the management interface was updated, uh, in my case, with the DHCP configuration, which is the same as it was before. Uh, if you chose to have a static IP, the IP will have, added, have been added here. DNS servers were entered, NTPs were populated, we changed the host name, a login banner was added, but that's not all. We create a couple of custom reports, which will help you get to the information you need quicker. In the security policies, we've pre-populated three rules. First one is the DNS sinkhole block policy, which will uh, block all of the sinkhole traffic. So the second two are in and outbound bogon drop rules. They have been disabled, so you can consider if you want to use them or not. We've created several new security profiles that you can use in your security policies including one security profile group called default, which will be auto-populated in any new security policy that you create. If you want to take a look at all the configuration bits that were added, you can go back to the device tab, go to the configuration audit, and run a comparison. And you'll get a list of all the changes that were introduced into the configuration file. 
I hope you enjoyed this video. Please go ahead and try out the day one configuration tool for yourself. If you have any questions, feel free to come and ask in the comment section or on the live community discussion forum.